right, everybody, we're working on the E93. Um, if you haven't been following this build, you can kind of catch up on some of my other videos. But in short, we bought this car. Um, the previous owner was told that the engine was blown. There was a hole somewhere and the oil and coolant was mixing um, and that it had bad injectors. And so, so far what we've done is we've torn down the engine to get the oil filter housing off so we can repair that. Um, my guess is that the oil and coolant is mixing because this, this gasket has failed. Um, so today we're gonna to be piecing it back together. I tried to order the oil filter housing kit from FCP Euro. They fucked me and the kit did not show up. So I went to AutoZone and I got an aftermarket one. In the meantime, we'll put the AutoZone one in and just give it a test. So I have fresh oil that's going in. I put new injectors, I coated those. If you need to switch your injectors or coat injectors, you can watch those videos. Um, but we're gonna be piecing this back together and hopefully today we will start it up. So the gasket only goes in one way. It's pretty obvious the way it goes. So we'll get the gasket in. We'll start replacing this. All right, so this is back on. We can reconnect the um, the oil lines to it and the radiator hose. So next we want to get the uh, intake manifold back on. Um, you don't have to take it off completely to do this job. I decided to um, just, be, just to make my life easier. So the hard part now is putting it back together and remembering to plug everything in. So. So usually people take the throttle body off. I did not, however, um, when you're putting it back on, there is a hose that clips onto here, and then you have your um, airflow sensor, and then you have your throttle body uh, connector that goes down here, and then that box slides in on top of this. So I've got, uh, I'm gonna get this onto the studs first, and then we can connect everything. It's all about getting it at the right angle. I was having it too far down. Um, so seeing it was felt intuitive to, to tilt it this way, but it's actually, you want to tilt it up and then get it in. So once you get that stud in the back corner, you're good to go. So you're supposed to torque these down to 11 foot pounds, I believe. I'm just giving them the old trusty Joni. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the charge pipe back on. Hi buddy. What's up dude? Do you want me to order Wingstop? Yeah. Alright, so I got the diverter valves in. I've got all the vacuum lines hooked back up. And um, I've got the charge pipe clipped in. I've got the, the sensor plugged in over there. Um, and then I've also got the bolt in down here and then I tighten down these lines. This is a 13 millimeter, so just get a small ratchet and get in there and wrench away at it. Um, if you want to replace the O-rings, you can, but just presses in and get the bolt started and then ratchet away on that. Um, I left this loose so that we can wiggle the intercooler in because um, I still got to get underneath and plug the radiator, um, the intercooler, and put the drain plug back in for the oil line. So. Um, once we do that, then we can fill it with oil, fill it with coolant, and uh, get started. So um, let's hop back underneath the car and put the coolant drain back in and get the intercooler back in. All right, so I think we're all set to uh, start it up. So we're going to put the key in and start it. All right, here we go. It started! We did it. So it looks like it's running pretty smooth. I don't want to jinx it, but so far so good. Um, I'm gonna check a couple of things. I'm gonna bleed the coolant and then we'll check the oil. So seems like the idle just dropped down to a normal level. So cross your fingers, boys. This could be it. All right, so I cleared all the codes. The only code that came back was a code for the oil sensor. Um, and then I tried to check the oil level and it just said inactive. So 
Oil sensors for sure bad. Um, however, um, I bled the cooling system and so far so good. Now let's check the oil filter and see. And I, I'm not sure how this will look because, you know, there was, it was pretty milky before. So I don't know if this one's gonna be milky or, or what, but let's check it out. But it looks pretty watery. It's definitely milky in there. All right, so after the first startup, we obviously saw some coolant still in the oil filter housing, uh, but my gut was that it was still mixing, but um, before I made any rash decisions, I decided, you know what, let me do a compression test. Let me do a coolant um, system pressure test. Um, what I did was I drained out all the coolant um, to make sure um, we can get some clean oil. So I did that and both of them came back good. The, the compression was perfect across the board. All of them were exactly the same and I put 15 PSI in the coolant system and it didn't drop at all. So I didn't put any coolant in there when I was testing it, So, but if it's holding pressure, it's holding pressure. So um, I think what we might be experiencing is that there's just leftover coolant and stuff in the engine from before. Because um, once that water mixes with the oil and it emulsifies, it's really hard to get out of the engine. So what I did is I went to Home Depot and I bought a couple, um, couple jugs of just some cheap oil and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple of oil changes without an oil filter. So I'm going to put some oil in there, start it, run it up without any coolant in the system and then once we get some decent coolant or once we get some decent oil um, then I'll put coolant back in the system and see if we have anything mixing but um, if we can get decent oil and then add in coolant then we know our problem was just that oil filter housing gasket. So, so I'm going to go ahead and flush the, I'm going to go ahead and start it up with a fresh oil in there and, and see what we come up with. So after draining and refilling the oil, this is what it looks like. So that's a really good sign. Um, now I'm going to add in some coolant and um, see if we get any cross contamination. I've got coolant in there. I bled the coolant system and I'm letting it run. It's running good. So I give it a couple seconds to circulate and then I'm going to check the oil. And um, if it looks good, then maybe I'll take it for a test drive. So I've let it run and the oil looks pretty good um it looks a whole lot better than it did before so i think we might be in good shape on this one so i'm gonna let it let it run some more maybe i'll take it out for a drive and uh and see what we got so after i got the car running really well i decided to take it out to dinner with uh, uh julie so we drove it out um, about 15 miles car ran beautifully um, and then on the drive home um, I got a little greedy and I decided to try to get it into boost and I got a 30 FF error so um, either the intercooler piping or something popped off and then it began to run really rough once I got home um, and I scanned for codes and it was a cylinder 3 misfire. Yeah, I, uh, I'm back to the drawing board. We have a lot more diagnosis to do uh, but for the 21 miles I drove it, it drove really well um, and there was no coolant in the oil when I got home I checked so to be continued so if you haven't already make sure you hit the subscribe button drop a like on the video and stay tuned for the um, fate of this car thanks for watching I'll see you next time